Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Mr. Sasato's YouTube videos. Today we're going to be going over this question, which is how can you tell whether or not a chemical reaction is going to happen or not? And so this isn't really like the signs of chemical reactions, which we've talked about extensively, but it's kind of if you were to mix two solutions together, how are you going to know whether or not you're going to actually get a reaction, form a solid or something, or how are you going to know that nothing will actually happen? So in order to answer this question, the first thing that we need to look at is aqueous solutions. So keep this in mind, right? Most chemical reactions happen when you mix substances that have been dissolved inside of water. So picture this, right? You have two ionic substances. And remember, ionic substances form crystals. They form solids normally. And so let's say I have you know, two powders. If I take those powders and I put them next to each other and I say, OK, um, it says a chemical reaction is supposed to happen when I mix these together. So I just put the powders on top of each other and I wait. Is a reaction going to happen? Chances are mostly no. If you have two solids and you mix them together, nothing's going to happen unless you do something to them. So sometimes, you know, adding heat might actually get them to react or something, but a lot of times that doesn't even do anything because ionic substances have really high melting points. So how do you get ionic substances to react with one another? Well, remember, ionic substances dissolve in water. And when they dissolve in water, what they do is they form what we call aqueous solutions. Now, aqueous solutions uh, can be mixed together with other aqueous solutions in order to form solids. So Kool-Aid is a good example of an aqueous solution. You have this powder, right? You add water to it. It dissolves in that water, and now you have this solution of Kool-Aid, okay? That's what you do with your ionic uh, solids. You grind them up. You mix them in water, and now you have a bunch of ions floating around inside of your solution, which are available to be mixed with other ions from other solutions. And so it makes it a lot easier for those ions to trade spots and to mix around. And so solubility is the measurement of how much of a substance dissolves in a liquid. Normally, we're looking at water. And the two terms that we use are soluble and insoluble. So if something is soluble, that means that it dissolves easily in water. So Kool-Aid is an example of a soluble substance, okay? What about things that don't dissolve in water, though, very easily, okay? That would be an insoluble substance. Now, the symbols that we use are the ones from our chemical equations. So AQ means soluble. S means insoluble. So AQ means that, you know, you have like your nice little solution of Kool-Aid here. But S would be something that doesn't dissolve in water. Like if you put, you know, I don't know, a chunk of iron into a thing of water, nothing's really going to happen. The iron's not going to spontaneously dissolve into the liquid, okay? If you're wondering how things dissolve in water, here's just a reminder. Remember, we have polar, uh, water is polar. It has partial negative, partial positive charges. So ions are charged, and so they will be surrounded by this, uh, by these water molecules, and that's what makes them soluble. You might think, hey, well, what makes them insoluble then if they're ionic? Sometimes these bonds, like this Na plus, and let's say it's mixed with something else. Actually, Na isn't a really good example because all sodium salts are soluble. But let's say you have like iron 2 plus and you have um, something else, I don't know, uh, CO3 2 minus or something. Uh, those might actually be stuck together to a degree that the water molecules can't separate them from one another. Okay. Now, how are we going to figure this out? Use a solubility chart. So a solubility chart gives you all the positive ions uh, right here. It gives you all the negative ions right here. This is obviously not extensive. It doesn't have all of them. But this will be given to you, and it's in the top part of your note packet, right? So all you do is you find your positive ion. Let's say I'm looking at iron 2. There's a good one. And then carbonate, like I said. So iron 2 and carbonate. So iron 2 is here. Carbonate's here. And you look at where they cross, and so they cross right here. S means that it's insoluble, so iron 2 carbonate, if you put that in water, uh, nothing's going to happen. It's not really going to dissolve. But if it, um, And if you're thinking, hey, like, uh, does, does none of it dissolve? Okay, everything is slightly soluble in water, okay? So some of it will dissolve, but such a small quantity, it would look as though, like, nothing actually happened. If you were to, like, look at your iron 2 carbonate, you're like, hey, just looking at clumps of stuff at the bottom of a little test tube, and it would look like nothing had actually changed. But that's what you do. So let's try another one. Let's say uh, like magnesium, and we'll do sulfate. So magnesium's here, sulfate's here. Where do they cross? They cross right here. That dissolves in water. In fact, I believe that is Epsom salts, which you can add to your bath or something. Okay, so spoiler alert, you're going to have to still be able to go from formulas to names, okay? So 
Uh, for example, if it gives you any of these formulas, you should be able to find, okay, the positive ion, the negative ion, and then use your chart to tell whether it's soluble or insoluble. So if you want to pause now, take a look and see if you can figure these out, but I'm going to go through them pretty quickly. Okay, so I have calcium. What is OH? It is hydroxide. Take a look at your chart. That doesn't dissolve in water. It is insoluble. What about this? Ca calcium, SO4. SO4 is sulfate, so calcium sulfate. That doesn't dissolve in water either. It's insoluble. I've got aluminum and then C2H3O2. What do you think that is? That's acetate. So aluminum acetate, that also doesn't dissolve in water. It's insoluble. Let's try this one. I've got copper, and there's a 2 here, so it's copper 2. And then I have nitrate, so copper 2 nitrate. Finally, something that dissolves in water. Okay, so this is aqueous. That means that it is soluble in water. What about this? We've got lithium and SO4. Again, is sulfate, lithium sulfate. That's aqueous, that dissolves in water. K is potassium, Br is bromide. Again, dissolves in water. Cu, Cl2, so again, that two comes from here, that's copper two, so copper two chloride. That dissolves in water. AgCl, that's silver chloride. That doesn't dissolve in water, that's insoluble. I've got nickel and the two, so that would be nickel two, and that would be bromide, so nickel two bromide. That dissolves in water. FeSO4, okay, so FeSO4, that's iron uh, 2 sulfate. SO4 is a 2 minus, so this must be a 2 plus if there aren't any subscripts. So that's iron 2 sulfate. Again, that would be nice and soluble in water. I've got sodium sulfate, that dissolves in water. And we already did this one, this is iron carbonate. So iron 2 carbonate, that one forms a solid, and we already knew that. All right, now, how would we actually use this practically? Okay, so it's great to know, hey, this dissolves in water, this doesn't dissolve in water. But here's the way that you would actually use this. Let's say I have a solution, and that solution has silver ions in it. And I have another solution, and that has chloride ions in it. If I were to add drops of these together, would I get a solid? So would I get a chemical reaction, or would I not get a chemical reaction? So what this is asking is, if you mix these ions together, are you going to get a reaction, or are you not going to get a reaction? If you do get a reaction, we call that a precipitate. Okay, and so I want to know what the chemical formula of that is. And again, SAQ, that's all I care about. Solid, aqueous. So see if you can crisscross these charges. And again, I'm going to go through them pretty quickly. And yes, again, remember, if it says that it's aqueous, that means there is no reaction. Nothing happens. So for some of these, nothing's going to happen. So you, if you crisscross your charges, you know, you actually didn't need to even crisscross your charges. Nothing's actually going to happen. So again, I've got AG plus, I've got Cl minus, that would be AGCl. Look at your chart. That forms a precipitate. So if I mix those together, I would see a white solid forming because this is actually white. All right, AG plus CO3 2 minus. What would that look like? Crisscross your charges. That also forms a solid. Okay, so if I mix these together, again, I would get a chemical reaction. This isn't even on your list, so you don't have to worry about it. If you're worried about crisscrossing charges and stuff, it doesn't matter. Fe2, and then I've got Cl, no reaction. That forms an aqueous solution. So if I had iron 2 ions and I had chloride ions and I mixed them together in a solution, I wouldn't see anything. That would be no chemical reaction. We already know this one forms a chemical reaction because that, again, is iron carbonate or iron 2 carbonate, and so that forms a solid. What about Fe2 plus and OH minus? Try crisscrossing them. Did you remember to put your parentheses? Because you can't just have an OH with a 2 next to it. You have to make sure that you know that you have two OHs and not just an OH2. All right, and again, that forms a solid. What about uh, sodium chloride, salt? No reaction. Of course we know salt dissolves in water. What about sodium carbonate? No reaction. That also dissolves in water. What about sodium hydroxide? No reaction. Again, that dissolves in water. All right, so hopefully that made sense. If you have any questions, let me know. But again, that's the end of this lesson.